Well, welcome to worship. Uh, last week, it was just Steve Wiley and I still recovering from COVID, keeping our distance, so just the two of us here. Uh, this week, our worship team is COVID-free, so we're so excited, so am I, so is Steve. And we have a few people just kind of trickling back into the sanctuary, and hopefully next week we'll be back to normal. But really appreciate those that are here today in person, and those of you that are with us online, wherever you are, it is time to worship the Lord. And we're going to have communion together. We're going to get back into the 23rd Psalm again today. So let's come before him with praise and singing and joy. Let's worship God. Okay, well, good morning. Uh, the few, the proud, the Marines. No, on your onward Christian soldiers. Well, we want to worship Jesus this morning. So would you just uh, lift up his name? Call me Lord, you know my name. I'm standing now, I'm not ashamed. I've searched and I've came up empty. This world has nothing for me. You are my one and only. Everything to you, not holding back. Whoa. 
giving it all to you today, Jesus. Father, we are so very grateful that you have manufactured us to be loved by you. Thank you, dear Father, that you pour out your love on us each and every day. You fill us with all the fullness of your kingdom each and every day, and we thank you for that, Jesus. Now, Lord, we invite you into this place today. Do in us and through us everything you want to accomplish today. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Thanks, guys. That was just awesome. Hey, uh, Dave, who is drumming with us today? Oh, sorry. That's all right. Sorry, senior moment. No. 
This is Ayush. Ayush. All right. We're happy to have him with us. We haven't seen him in a couple of months. Yeah. But he drops into play, and we really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks so Thank much, you, Ayush. Ayush. So right. good to have you here. Well, let's take a minute and greet one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be mindful of how people want to be greeted today. <laughs> Good to see everyone today, and uh, welcome to everyone online. Uh, a few folks are on there today already. Uh, it's Communion Sunday, so if you are home, uh, get your communion stuff ready. We'll be having communion at the end of the service. Uh, we will not be having coffee hour today. Um, Julie and Twyla aren't here, and we figured with so few of us that we'd be okay without coffee. Um, Kathy Belden is here, though, and you can see Kathy about scripts. She can help you out with that. And our offering basket's in the back, as usual, and you can always mail in your offering or uh, tithely.com on our website. Our Zoom Bible study's going strong. We have just had a great time going through the 23rd Psalm, and I'll be talking a little bit about that during the sermon because we've got a lot of good stuff come up. And if you'd like to join us, just email me, and we'll get you a link. Uh, I'd love to have you join us. And then uh, mask update, uh, if you are not vaccinated and you come to worship, please wear a mask. And other than that, it's just up to you. And if, as we see here, we've got some folks with masks, some with not. Maybe we should, you know, divide up the sanctuary and have, <laughs> ushers can meet you and, <laughs> no, we won't do that, all right. But uh, it's just good to have that, that, that freedom and just to be cautious with one another. And it uh, seems like everyone who got COVID, as far as I've heard uh, from the Luau, has, are, are now testing negative, and so we just pray for lingering effects, and yeah, Raymond, you're negative, right? Yeah, it's, it, what, what a day when we want to be, we're happy about being negative, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, so that's all the announcements I have. Um, Corey, will you come lead us in prayer this morning? Good morning, everyone. I just want to let you know, I did not come down with the COVID, so I feel really blessed because God had other plans for me these last two weeks. So, and I'm so grateful that most of our members have come and are healthy again. I don't know what the what the normal is anymore because our life has just been in an uproar this last year. So I have some update dates. Diane Bowman had her surgery and she's home and she's doing fine. Bill had his surgery and he's doing fine and that's the reason that God spared me so I could take care of him. And Bonnie had her knee surgery this past week 
and she's doing okay. She had been in a lot of pain, but she says she's doing fine now. So let's come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that a lot of the people that have had COVID, that they are healed and that they're back to starting their lives again, Lord. And we just praise you for the surgeries that were performed in the last few weeks. Lord, you are just so good, so good. And we just sometimes forget about that. But we do know that you're always there for us. I have a few concerns. Joyce Springsteen has been down with a bad, bad headache. And she found out yesterday that her children have, and grandkids have come down with COVID. So she's upset about that. So we just pray for healing for them. My friend Elsie, who had a hip replacement surgery this last April, Lord, she was doing so good. And the other day she went to reach down to get something and her hip popped out. So she had to go to emergency and it took two doctors to put her hip back into place. So we pray for her that she'll just try and take it easy and that her pain will be gone. We also pray for the missionaries in China who found out this week that they are unable to be teaching English over there anymore and they have a month either to find a different job or to move out. Also, Pastor Drew from Trinity, San Francisco, his mom had a setback, so we need to keep them in prayer. And Lord, we pray for our pastor search team that they will follow wherever you lead them. Lord, I know you have a plan for us and you'll find the right person to lead us and to be with us. So just open their hearts, their minds, and let them know that you have a plan, Lord. Also pray for the people that are losing everything in the fires. Um, one part of this country, Lord, we have fires, and the other part, we have floods. So we just pray for all the people that are involved. And Lord, just be with our government, our local, state, and the states. Just have them turn to you for guidance and be with our kids as they all have started back into school. Lord, I just pray that they'll be saved from the virus because this is one that's really spreading around. And usually when all the kids get together, there's always something happening. So I just ask you to watch over them. And Lord, I just praise you and thank you for everything that you do for us. You are such a good and faithful Lord. I just, as I walked in this morning, I could just feel the Holy Spirit just enter me after the two weeks of being just dreadful and anxious, and I just felt so much at peace. So I thank you for that, Lord. Now let's say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Have a blessed week and try and stay cool.
I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Well, I still find it hard when there's one version you've memorized that in, and then you try to read it, <laughs> like biting my tongue with all the... Uh, these and thou's, <laughs> not to say that. Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you for the time together this morning. Uh, thank you for this wonderful psalm written some 3,000 years ago, and still it is uh, valid, it is timely, it speaks to our hearts, our minds, and our souls, and I pray that you would let your word enter into us, and we would enter into your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. So our verse this morning is, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, there's, there's many things that you cannot choose in this life. For instance, uh, one is when you were born. You had nothing to do with that. <laughs> it, it was chosen for you. Where you were born chosen for you, and then the family and the circumstances that you were born into were chosen for you. My point is, you can't choose your starting point. You can't. At least as far as I know, you had nothing to do with that. But you can choose your direction. You can choose your destination. Now, a lot of people don't believe that that's true. And uh, truth be told, that there is, there is something there about choosing your destination, choosing your direction. Those that say, no, you really don't have much choice. Well, if you were born into poverty, if you were born maybe into a minority, maybe you were born with a handicap, or maybe you were born with the genetics and into an environment that predisposes you to addictions. Or maybe you were born a female in a male-dominated society. Those things, other things, you might feel like your choices are severely limited when it comes to paths and directions and destinations. And you know, they may be limited. And I think there, there are limitations there. There really are. You're correct. Your choices when it comes to paths might be limited by some of those factors. But in today's message, I hope to bring some hope and courage to you that whatever your limitations, you need not be limited by the world's limitations. You can choose to take steps beyond the world's limitations 
And you can choose to follow the good shepherd. You can choose to step into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, I've never been to the state of Maine. Anybody here ever been to Maine? Ah, all right, Carol's been to Maine. All right. Uh, I've heard that there's a certain saying, if you ask for directions in Maine, they have a thing they say. Do you know, does anybody know that saying? Now, let's put the slide up. You'll, you'll recognize this. You can't get there from here. You can't get there from here. I'll translate that into Californian. You can't get there from here. You know, you might hear that in Maine. You can't get there from here. But you'll never hear that from Jesus. You'll never hear you can't get there from here, from Jesus. Jesus said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Anyone. If anyone desires to come after me. Anyone. No matter what your starting point, no matter how limited your choices, no matter what family you found yourself in, no matter how rich you are or how poor you are, no matter what language you speak, no matter what shade of color your skin is, no matter how able or disabled you are, no matter your gender, Jesus says anyone, anyone. That means anyone. <laughs> it means everyone. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And you know that anyone, that includes you. But what path have you chosen? You know, sometimes we choose path. Sometimes paths are chosen for us. Sometimes we just kind of stumble along and we end up on a path and we look around and say, wow, how did I get here? You know, there's a poem that's used a lot in recovery groups and maybe you've heard it, maybe you've read it before, but um, came to mind my mind in looking at this. It's called, There's a Hole in My Sidewalk. The Rom it's from a book actually called, There's a Hole in My Sidewalk, The Romance of Self-Discovery by Portisha Nelson. Uh, she was an actress and uh, was in movies like The Sound of Music. You may remember her. But she wrote this poem in her book. It's called Autobiography in Five Chapters. So let's take a look at this. Chapter one, I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes, it still takes forever to find a way out. Chapter two, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. It's, but it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. Chapter 3. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. Do we see a theme going on here? It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter 4. I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. And then chapter 5. I walk down a different street. That's true, isn't it? Have you been there? Have you walked down that street? And I'll tell you, Jesus invites anyone, Jesus invites everyone to walk down a new street, to walk down a different street, to stop walking on that old street. Jesus invites us to take a new direction, to get on his righteous path. But I'll tell you something, Jesus warns us Jesus lets us know up front that when we get on his path, it's a narrow path. In uh, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, 
enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way or broad is the path that leads to destruction and there are many who go by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it. Wow. Easy to pass by the narrow gate. Easy to get on that broad road through the broad gate. But I want to tell you today, here's the good news. You can choose to be one of the few that find it. And Jesus is the good shepherd. And if you have interest in finding that road, I would say just ask. Just ask him. And he says he will lead you to it. And he will walk next to you on it. You know, in the Gospel of John, Jesus talks about being the good shepherd. We read that passage earlier, but remember, he's the door. He said he's the gate. (laughs) He says he's the road. He is the way. Jesus said, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. I want to tell you, Jesus really says you can get there from here, wherever here may be. When we were talking about this in the Zoom study last Wednesday, somebody brought up this old poem, and maybe you know this old poem. I'm not going to read the whole thing. The famous part of it is uh, two roads diverged in a wood, and I I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. It's a familiar line, isn't it? Two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. You know, it seems like there's a lot more than two roads out there, doesn't it? It seems like there's countless paths out there. And in some way, yes, that is true, but I just want to point out Jesus had a different perspective. Jesus Jesus sees only two paths. Jesus sees the narrow path, his path, and he sees the broad path, which is the way of the world. And uh, one gate opens to that broad path. Jesus says, wide is the way that leads away from God. Away from God and leads to death. The narrow way, the other gate, opens to the righteous way, leads to God, leads to life. So according to Jesus, there's only two paths, there's only two roads to choose from. One leads to ultimate destruction, and the other leads to true life. But you might wonder, well, how do, how do I know? How do I know if the path I'm on is the righteous path that leads to life or, or not? Well, one clue is, and it's right there in the psalm, it says, he leads me on the path of righteousness. So has the Lord led you there? And he leads us on the path for his namesake, for his glory, for his honor. Now, just a couple of thoughts about path, because scripture, in scripture, path, you know, or a road, uh, when it uses that term, it's also often symbolic of, um, of a direction that is it leading towards God or away from God. Are, in the, are you on the path? Are you on the way that leads to God? or away from God. But another way it speaks of using a path is about a manner or an approach. Not so much a direction, but a a way of being, a way of doing, uh, which I would call the Jesus way. So does your path, does the way you're walking on the path reflect Jesus' way of living, Jesus' way of giving? So that's one thing to ask is is the path a path that god is leading me on you know when i was first following jesus i thought one way to test the path and i really believe this was you know i could tell if the path was righteous i thought is if it was easy that was my thing if it's easy and things are going like this one right after another good 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 it must be god well i (laughs) i just want to let you know i was really wrong And many Christians fall into this trap. 
you know, we might think that, and I know that I did, if something got hard, if it was costly, if it was rough, if it was rocky, I thought, oh, that's the enemy. That's the devil trying to trip me up. But then I started listening more to Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus said, well, the road is narrow. The road is hard. And I thought, oh, maybe easy is not the best test. You know, we sing a song many times, uh, many Sundays, Blessed Be Your Name. Remember that song, Blessed Be Your Name? And we sing, Blessed Be Your Name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed Be Your Name. So using my old test, I would have to stop singing right there. Because <laughs> the next verse is, Blessed Be Your Name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Sometimes the narrow road, many times the narrow road, is the hard road. And next week, when we get into the next verse, we're going to see that sometimes that road, that path, leads right through the wilderness, right into the valley of the shadow of death. And we're going to talk more about that next week. But my point this morning is that if the whether the path is easy or not is not a good test as to whether it's righteous or not. So how can we know? Well, when we were in our Bi Zoom Bible study, we came up with two questions, and they come from the first two G's of peacemaking. Remember peacemaking? There were four G's in peacemaking. There were four things to be mindful of in peacemaking, but the first two really fit when you start trying to test is a path of God or not. The first G, if you remember, was glorify God. So does the destination bring glory to God? Because remember, he leads me on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So is it bringing his name glory? Is it bringing God's reputation honor? The second G, if you remember, it was get the log out of my eye. You know, is there something I'm blind to? Is there something I'm rationalizing? Is there something I need to see before I take one more step? So does this path glorify God? Do I have a log in my eye? I'm not seeing where I'm really going, like that hole in the sidewalk. But here's a third question. And this goes back to the, the Jesus way. Is the direction and manner that I'm walking in, one that Jesus would walk in. Would Jesus walk in this way, on this road? So the righteous road may not sol save us from traveling through dark valleys. Sometimes the righteous road will take us right through the dark valley, but he promises to be with us in the valley of the shadow of death. And more on this next week, but valleys are kind of cool because you come out on the other side. <laughs> you don't stay there. You don't stay in the valley. Now, we were sharing um, about examples of when Jesus uh, ever asked us to just change directions and get on a different street. And um, people on the, in the Bible study went around and shared. And uh, I just want to share one of them with you. One person shared that she was part of a work group that was known for its complaining, where she worked. Her, her work group was known as the toxic work group because <laughs> they always were finding something wrong with something. It was just a continual complaining party. And she said she started praying about this because it just didn't feel right uh, in her spirit. It's like, and she'd get caught up in it, and she'd be complaining too. And she was praying, and she said she felt the Lord saying, you don't have to walk that way. You can walk in a different direction. You can get off that road and take a different road. So praying to God for strength, she stopped getting involved in the put-downs. She stopped adding to the complaints. Instead, she said she started finding ways to encourage and to build up instead of tearing down. She walked down this narrow path. Everybody was going in the complaint direction. She started walking in the encouragement direction. And she said, you know what happened? A lot of people stopped complaining and started joining her in encouraging. And sometimes we know we're on the right path because we can see God changing our own hearts 
And sometimes we know we're, we're on the right path because as our hearts change, we can see other hearts changing around us. Now, an image I used early on in this series was that of backpacking. And I think this really applies here. And if you remember, I shared that when you're backpacking and, and the path is rough, and the path is narrow, and it goes up this way on one side, and it goes down that way on the other side. You want to keep your eyes on the path, and especially on the boot backs of the person in front of you. Because if you start looking this way or that way, you know what's going to happen. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall. You're going to get off the path. Watch that one in front of you. Follow closely. There's going to be plenty of time to see the sights when you stop and rest by that green pasture, that still water. So the Jesus path, the narrow path, it's a new path. It's a different path. And I just want to say plainly, Jesus is not interested in patching up the potholes on your old path. He's not into patching up your potholes. He's not interested in helping you find ways to walk around the potholes. Jesus says, get off that road. Get on a new path, the righteous path, the Jesus path. Well, we're going to come to the table in just a few moments. And I just want to kind of set, set the table. When we come to the table... It's a time for us to be, we're all here together, but it's a time to be quiet before the Lord. It's a time to check in with God. Coming to the table is a time to think about where am I walking? What path am I walking on? Where am I headed? Am I living in a way that's bringing God glory? Am I on a path that's bringing me closer to God? Or have I been getting farther from God? When we come to the table, it's a time to pause and ask, Lord, is there a log in my eye? In uh, one of the Psalms, I think it's 51, it says, Lord, if there be any wicked way within me, reveal it to me now. And the idea is so I can confess it and be made right with you. So, Lord, is there a log in my eye? Am I in denial about something? Do I need to repent of something? Do I need to get right with you about something and get back on the path? And the good news is that wherever you find yourself, Jesus is just one step, one turn away. He is there. He's ready and waiting for you to change direction and get off that path. He's just wanting to lead you to a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Wherever you are, the Lord says you can get here from there. Let's pray. Well, Lord, there are so many distractions and we can get our eyes off the path so easy. We can get our eyes off of you so easy and before we know it, we're going the wrong way. We're going another way. And praise God that you lead us into paths of righteousness for your name's sake, wherever we are. You come and you find us. You come and find the lost sheep. You gather us to yourself and you get us back on the path. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's come to the table of the Lord. This is the Lord's table. And our Savior invites all who trust him to this holy feast. And you need not be perfect to come to this table, but you do need to be forgiven. So let's take a minute and pray. Lord, as we come to this table, I ask that we would ponder the path that we are walking on. And if we find that we are on the wrong path, I pray that we would get on the right path with you right now in this moment, that we would say, Lord, get me on the right path. And you promise to come and lead us into paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Lord, I pray that you would take these simple 
ordinary items of bread and wine and use them to speak to us in our hearts and our spirits and our souls about extraordinary things, about how you came and gave your life for us, and how you rose from the grave victorious over sin and death, how you forgive us, how you make us new, how you restore us, bring us to yourself, how you fill us with your Holy Spirit, and how one day we will live and rule and reign forever with you in glory. So Lord, these are extraordinary things, and you are an extraordinary God. And as we eat this bread and drink this cup, remind us that you are in us and we are in you. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks, he blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body given for you, the body of Christ given for us. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed with my blood. All of you, drink of it, the cup of the new covenant. And every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again, and he will come again. So as the worship team leads in song, I invite you to come up the center aisle uh, to the communion table here and uh, serve yourself of communion.
Christ be magnified. 
we magnify in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Carol, can you put the chorus back up from that song, Oh Christ Be Magnified? Yeah. Wow, guys, awesome. I mean, the bass, the drums, the piano, the singing, and the message. It, I mean, that is the message of this verse. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's explaining what he does, but this is the prayer, this is the prayer of the heart. This is the prayer. O oh, Christ be magnified, let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. O oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. That's walking in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Let's stand and receive the blessing. Lord, as we leave this place or this time together, uh, whether the sanctuary here or the sanctuary in homes where people are worshiping with us, I just pray blessing upon everyone and that Christ would be magnified, that his praise would arise, that Christ would be magnified in each and every one of us, that Christ would be magnified from the altar of our lives, that Christ would be magnified in you. Go in peace and walk in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, because that's where he wants to lead you. Amen. Follow the shepherd. Thanks, guys. Wow.